Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop, the actual shop and not my 3D printing workshop downstairs. I think it's time for a fresh start. The way I work is that I find things that are interesting to me and I want to learn how to do them and so I jump in with both feet and the next thing I know I've got like 20 different hobbies and I can't keep up with any of them. So woodworking has been and always will be my main passion and my number one hobby and I kind of decided to start over with my shop. I'm going to rearrange the whole thing and recommit myself to building up my workshop and start putting out some more projects and I cemented that commitment recently with the purchase of this saw stop table saw. Don't worry, I've heard all of the anti saw stop arguments. People will not work safe because they rely on the saw stop to prevent them from injuries. If you need a saw stop, then you probably shouldn't be woodworking. Saw stop gives people a false sense of safety. A saw stop is no substitute for a healthy respect for power equipment. I myself have been woodworking for about 20 years and I haven't had any real serious accidents. I really have a bad relationship with angle grinders, but as far as band saws and table saws go, um, I've been fortunate and blessed to not have any accidents. But that isn't to say I haven't had many close calls, and any one of those close calls could have turned into a serious accident if any of the hundreds of variables surrounding those circumstances would have been different. Nobody says that they are such a good driver that they don't need a seatbelt. Fact of the matter is, you can only control so much when it comes to either driving a car or operating a table saw, and there are outside factors that can contribute to an accident. And so it's that thought process that kind of led me to desire to get a saw stop in my own shop. Now to be honest with you, it was kind of a no-brainer considering the two saws that I was trying to decide between. When I decided to upgrade my table saw, I was really choosing between a Powermatic or a saw stop. And it's really hard to compare apples to apples now because Powermatic has so many standard options that are digital and high tech and everything. But let's say we look at the entry level Powermatic 1.75 horsepower saw, the PM1000, and compare that to the price of the 1.75 horsepower saw stop cabinet saw. And as you can see, the price difference is almost negligible. So you're getting a very similar build quality plus the safety feature of the saw stop saw for maybe $50 to $100 more than what the Powermatic would cost. So once again, once it came down to that and I saw that price difference, and I don't really need all the digital wingdings, doodads, measuring devices that come on the Powermatic saws. I'd rather have that money go towards the saw stop safety system. So that's enough about why I bought this saw. This is going to be the centerpiece of my new shop. As you can see behind me, everything is still a mess. I will actually do kind of like a panorama view of what's going on here. This shop is going to be home to woodworking, metalworking, and any of my auto restoration projects. So it has to be organized in a manner that I can get to any one of those types of tasks in a relatively easy amount of time. My shop is 25 foot by 25 foot, and one whole half of it, I'm trying to fit the wood shop into one half. And then I have the, the metal shop and mechanic stuff on one wall, and then I'm gonna try to have a big open space here in the middle to be able to pull in my motorcycles and the VW and whatever else I'm working on. So I put the saw stop together and I haven't even been able to use it yet. I've got power to it, everything's fine. I didn't want to start it up until I got some dust collection going. And so in this back corner, I'm, I have a whole plan for a dust collector. And so my next video that has to do with this shop is going to be about building this dust collector, but also adapting my little shop vac to the saw stop temporarily so I can build the dust collector. So I'm pretty excited about the future of this shop. I have a whole lot of things planned. I do industrial automation 
for a living, and I would like to apply some of that to the shop. I'd like for things to turn on automatically when I turn things on, like my dust collector automatically turns on when I turn on the machine. I am interested in trying to get my blast gates automated as well. Um, I'd like to get a level sensor in my dust collector's dust bin so it'll let me know when it's full. So there's a whole lot of things um, I have planned. I don't know if I'm going to implement everything and I don't know how quickly that's going to happen because as you can see, I still have a lot going on and I still have a lot of organization to do. But I hope you'll stick with me through this. I think it'll be a fun journey. And I think once everything is all set up, it'll be kind of like the shop of the future. And the whole idea about this is to get the most productivity out of the smallest space and try to make it as easy as possible to do your job without having to walk back and forth between machines as often as you do when you have to do turn things on and off manually. So if you're interested in keeping track of what I'm doing, go ahead and click that subscribe button. There's a bell that you can click for notifications if you're into that sort of thing. But also, you know, like this video and share it with your friends and maybe it'll get passed around a little bit. And hopefully your support and encouragement will help kind of spur me along and motivate me to, to get this done. So go ahead and get those ideas coming. Stick them in the comments section below. Let me know what you think I should do with this shop. Let me know what your opinions are on the whole saw stop debate. I know there's people are pretty passionate about it. And yeah, I think that's it for now. So my next video is going to be about adapting my shop vac to my saw stop so I can use the saw stop to start working on some of these projects. And then in future videos, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to lay out my shop and then doing a, a kind of a DIY two-stage dust collector system. I'm going to use a super dust deputy. So once again, if you're interested in that, hit the subscribe button. Thank you everybody for watching. I'll catch you next time. See you later. So, saw stop gives people a false sense of safety. Saw stop gives people soft <laughs> sauce. <laughs> okay. Saw stop gives people a false sense of safety. Saw stop gives people a, a, a false sa sense of safety. Mm.